read the word of God together. The passage is 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 38 through 44. All right, I'll begin. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in that region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and cook some stew for these prophets. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat it, they cried out, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing the man of God twenty loaves of barley bread, baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some leftover according to the word of the Lord. Now David Park will give the message. morning um, how do you feel do you feel okay uh, I found that some people got uh, caught cold and uh, sick um, actually uh, personally I don't like cold weather and so uh, you know winter season is coming so a little bit I have some complaint in my heart um, but the Friday I met uh, my father-in-law uh, who used to be a pilot and uh, sh he flew uh, all to all different countries uh, literally kind of most of the countries and then I asked, asked him uh, which country do you think is the best place to live and which uh, uh, yeah I actually the which place uh, is the best place to live and he said California <laughs> Uh, he said, yeah, California is the best place to live. <laughs> so weather is perfect. Yeah. So yeah, he tra actually, he traveled every, everywhere, and then, you know, that, is, that was his testimony. So I repented, and then uh, <coughs> realized that I, I should be uh, thankful. Um, the title of today's message is, They Will Eat and Have Some the Leftover. So key verse is uh, 43b. Uh, let's read the key verse all together. Okay, let's go. But Elijah answered, give it to the proud people to eat, for this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for reconciling us to you uh, through Jesus' this precious blood and making us your holy, lovely the children. Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful privilege to uh, the worship you uh, this moment. Uh, Father, you may feed us uh, with your word uh, through this message time uh, that we, which of us may uh, receive one word uh, very personally. Please have mercy on me. I may deliver this word only by your grace. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's passage is about food. Uh, who doesn't like food? We love to uh, eat especially uh, delicious food. Some of our children anxiously want to leave home after they graduate from their high school with many different reasons. One of the reasons is they don't like the homemade food anymore, feel a little bit, bit bored with the food. My daughter Anna she had the same the reason, and she really wanted to live in the, dom the, the campus dormitory. 
and the, the reason was like uh, she had uh, you know, some complaints about the homemade food, and now <laughs> she has le the eaten campus food for a while, and then now she really miss homemade food. <laughs> she is craving uh, for it. So, yeah, homemade food is best. Uh, don't think twice when you try to leave home. <laughs> we live in a country with a lot of food. So we may even take it for granted and not really understand the great value of food. But food is not necessarily plentiful for everyone. Even now, tens of millions of people worldwide are starving to some degree. And every year, three million children or so die of starvation for lack of food. Food is one of the essential things that people must have sustain their life. So after creating man, the God gave them food. And God gives not only physical food, but spiritual food as well, the true food. Jesus said in John, I'm mean in Matthew uh, 4, verse 4, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In today's passage, we see Elisha feeding two groups of people who were hungry in the midst of the, the uh, famine through uh, miracles. These two miracles helps us to encounter God who, feed, who feeds his people abundantly with his the great love and power, even in the midst of the famine. Also, we can learn how we can participate in the noble task of feeding those who are still starving in one day or another. Part one, get some flour. Now look at verse 38. Let's uh, read uh, this 38 together. Okay, let's go. When Elijah returned to Gilgal, there was a famine, actually three years long famine in that region. And there was a company of prophets there. It seems that these prophets were young prophets who were being educated and trained to become powerful, the future prophets. And as their leader, Elijah visited them regularly and uh, discipled them. This showed that one of his the important tasks as a prophet was to raise many other prophets who could preach the word of God. It shows that raising up the some uh, raising up the ones who can preach the word of God, such as the prophets, apostles, messengers, and the Bible teachers, is always the God's way to save people from their simple life in all generations. Perhaps at the time, Elijah was having a full Bible conference with this the growing young prophets. While uh, he was meeting with the prophets, Elijah said to his the servant, put on the large pot and the cook some stew for this the prophets. Elijah noticed that the prophets were hungry the without food because of the, fa the famine and wanted to feed them. The prophets had been eating abundant spiritual food, the word of God from uh, Elijah. But uh, they were so hungry for their physical food. Just imagine that uh, we went to a conference at the Big Bear Mountain and for Three days you don't eat anything and just you know, heard the, the message, you know, how, how would it feel? <laughs> um, it's, uh, 
it would be very hard. It's like a starving kind of you know, the conference. It will, uh, it is, this is uh, especially true for uh, young people, right? Young people, they feel hungry all the time. Uh, when we went to JBF, HBF, uh, the conference, the kids, they keep eating again and again. We, uh, we, carried, we brought a bunch of snacks, a lot of things, just uh, one and just two days, all gone. Yeah, so they, I don't know, their stomach is like a, like a black hole, you know, thing. <laughs> Elijah wanted to feed the young prophets not only the spiritual food, but also the physical food as well. His heart to care for the hungry prophets by feeding them is God's heart, God's heart toward us. God knows the spiritual and the physical need of his children quicker, quicker than anyone else and wants to meet their the needs. Jesus said, um, Jesus said, God knows what we need even before we pray. In Matthew 6, 8, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. God never, never wants his the children to go hungry. And it is God's heart that he wants to feed his children spiritually and physically enough. When we really believe that God cares what we need and will feed us enough, we can understand that we don't need to worry about anything for our food or our future life. Look at verse 39 to 40. Okay, let's read uh, this uh, verse together. Let's go. Thank you. One of the men the went out into the field to find herb for the stew. And he found a wild vine the with the lots of golds. He picked as many as is the golds as is the garment could hold. Because they were making a lot of stew, that he might be very, very happy to get the lots of golds. When he returned, returned, he cut the gourds into the pot of steel. But the problem was, no one knew what kinds of the gourds were. So there are many types of gourds. The so many gourds are the edible, the, such as the pumpkins and the butternut the squash. But some gourds are so bitter and toxic that they should never be eaten. For example, uh, eating a wild gourd called uh, colony things can kill you. Wild mushroom too. Some are the edible, but some are the poisonous. So you should be very careful when you try to eat uh, any kind wild vegetables. The prophets didn't know anything about the gourd the man had picked. The gold the looked okay and even uh, delicious you know, to, to eat. The finally, the stew were ready and the pour out for the men. But when they uh, started eating, they cried out, Man of God, there is a dead in the pot. They could not eat it at all. The wild gold caused such bitter taste and the poison to the stew. Instinctively, the prophets knew that if they ate this the stew, they would die. Have we ever drank the spoiled milk that is away past the uh, expiration the date? The taste is so terrible. 
unbearable uh, as a toxic you know, substance have formed in the milk. What lesson can we learn the, from here? Just as the wild gold caused the stew to be the poisonous, there are so many golds in the world that can harm and even kill our souls and the spirits, even if they look good and the enjoyable. They can be knowledge, education, culture, entertainment, political opinions, certain movement, and even teachings in the church. Science is good. I love science. But untruthful knowledge is accepted by people under the name of science. They sound good but are actually terrible, terribly harmful. Evolutionism, for example, seems to be scientific and even uh, in some ways sounds reasonable at first. But this knowledge has the deadly poison, atheism, and materialism that leads people not to believe, believe in God and his creation. Some cultures lead people to commit the sin while ignoring or suppressing the truth and the guilt in the name of freedom. We could consume a lot of uh, enter entertainment, such as music, the movie, and the computer games without any sense of problem. But they can cause the serious spiritual the harm to us unconsciously. We also should be careful about the taking certain the political the positions and social issues, being aware that there could be uh, some harmful the goals there. Poisonous goals can be found even in teachings in the church. Some teachings can come from mere human thoughts and the wisdom the, rather than from the Bible. Even if the teaching sounds good and uh, uh, pleasing, it is possible that they may cause spiritual harm to us. So instead of accepting or enjoying whatever that looks good and enjo enjoyable, we need to check whether it is good or bad based on the word of God. And with the spiritual discernment. In order to develop such a discernment, we must always meditate on the word of God and study the Bible deeply and be spiritually alert in prayer. We can imagine how much the hungry prophets who eagerly expected to eat a delicious in the stew the must have been disappointed after tasting the terrible stew. Then the, what uh, did uh, Elisha do? Look at verse uh, 41. Let's uh, read this verse all together. Okay, let's go. Elisha said, get some flour. He put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the spot. Elisha told them to bring some flour. And he put it into the pot and told them to serve the stew to the prophets to eat. When people tasted it, there was nothing harmful in the spot, in the pot. How could this happen? Can flour get rid of bitterness and the poison? If uh, flour can do that, then you know uh, we can use flour for any kinds of poison. <laughs> and uh, also, if uh, you 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 uh, messed up your cooking, your food, then you can just uh, pour flour, and then you know taste could you know change to be good. There is no evidence. Uh, th there is no such uh, evidence. This happened because the power of God was with the uh, flower through the Elisha. When God's healing and changing power came together, the flower discomposed and the removed all bitterness and the poison in the stew completely. 
At first, Elijah could tell people to throw away the bad stew. But instead of throwing away all the bad, all the bad stew, he changed the stew into edible, delicious stew with God's healing and changing power. Through his mighty healing and changing power, God fed the hungry young prophets. This miracle was the foreshadow of Jesus' ministry in the future and showed what God would do to feed his people through Jesus. The flower in the miracle represents the Jesus. Just as the flower removes the poison, Jesus removes all, all harmful things from everything through his the healing and changing power. Whatever it is, when Jesus enters, he removes all harmful elements and changes it to be sound and wholesome. If Jesus is put into all the knowledge and culture and teachings, all harmful things in them will be removed and they will be changed to be sound and the beneficial. Isaac Newton, called as a father of physics, said that science is the studying to study God's creation. So he studied the science for God's glory to reveal the glory of creation. And his scientific work brings so much the benefit to the science, science the field. Most of all, when Jesus is proclaimed and lifted up in the teachings and the mes messages in the church, they can be truly wonderful food, spiritual food for everyone. In particular, Jesus heals and uh, changes people. The wounds and sins in us are like the bitterness and poisons in the stew. And these wounds and the, the sins not only hurt, our, hurt ourselves, but also hurt others. For example, when we keep hatred or anger and pride, judgmental spirit and lust, any kinds of uh, sin in us, we unknowingly ended up hurting and harm others around us even though we don't want it. Then it is difficult for others to have close uh, relationship with us or even to be around us. On the other hand, just as a good food brings joy and the benefit to the people, when we have the Jesus' image in us, we provide comfort, strength, and joy to others. And people want to be with us. God's work of salvation through Jesus is not just to save us from judgment over sin and to go to heaven. God's salvation is changing us into Jesus' image through Jesus' healing and changing power. And we are changed and have Jesus' heart in us our fellowship will be a good food. Through our fellowship, we can feed each other and encourage and support and strengthen each other. Just our fellowship with Jesus is a good food for us. So we have to check for any bitterness and poison in us. And just as Elijah put the flour into the pot, we need to accept Jesus into our heart and ask him to remove all kinds of wounds and scars or sins from our heart. Surely, Jesus will transform us and challenge us and fill us with the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, so that we may uh, become people 
uh, full of the fruit of Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, uh, and peace. Most of all, through the miracle, the God showed that the coming Messiah Jesus would be the true food for all people. Again, the flower that Elisha put into the pot represents the Jesus who would become the life of bread to all people. By crushing his body and shed his blood on the cross, just like a grain was grounded, ground into flour. In John uh, chapter 6, 35, Jesus said to uh, Jesus said, the, He is the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Also in John chapter 6, uh, 54, Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. To feed us the true bread of life, God sent his one and only son and let him be pierced and torn and shed his blood on the cross. This Jesus is the true food that sustains our life and gives us a true satisfaction and strength. Thank God for feeding us with the true bread of life, the Jesus. May God help us to feed ourselves with Jesus by consuming him every day, by having the deep fellowship uh, with him. Part two. For this is what the law says. Um, let's read uh, verse 42. Okay, uh, let's go. <laughs> A man came from Baal, the Shailesha apparently alone, and brought 20 the barley loaves of bread. Uh, this bread was made from the first ripe grain. And he also brought some the heads of new uh, grain. This means that he gave his first fruit of his farming to God, to God as God uh, commanded in the law. This shows what kinds of man uh, he was. Offering first fruit is an uh, expression of our faith that this fruit came from God and God helped us to produce this and God is the Lord of all things and that we give thanks to God for his provision. But it is not necessarily easily easy to bring our first fruit uh, to God. At that time, most of the people in Israel that worshipped the idols. So a person like this man was uh, probably very rare. And also there were not many things to eat due to the famine. So this man must have wanted to make bread for himself first with his the first fruits and bring some leftover to God. However, this man believed in God and brought his the first fruits to God by faith and great thanks. And Elisha accepted this man's the offering and said to his servant, give it to the people to eat. Elisha again knew that the people with him were hungry and wanted to feed them with the bread that the man had brought. Actually, it was God who wanted to, feed, wanted to use the bread 
uh, this bread to feed many uh, the people because God saw the faith and the thanksgiving behind the, this man the, who brought the bread. And he wanted to use the bread to feed many uh, people at, as in instrument. God's great miracle to feed 100 hungry people that started from this one man's the offering, given out of faith and great thanks to God. Likewise, when we offer whatever we have uh, to God by faith and thanks, God always uses to, to do his the good work. Uh, look at verse uh, 43. Okay, let's read this uh, verse, verse all together. Okay, let's go. How can I, I said this before a hundred men, his servant asked, but Elijah answered, give it to the people to eat, for this is what the Lord says, they will eat and have some left over. There were about 100 people there. 20 barley you know, breads were not enough for 100 people. Even though they had a really good the quality food, the very fresh the barley bread baked from the first the ripe the grain, the amount was not enough. When we uh, want to help someone who are in need, but we don't have enough resources to meet their needs, it makes always sad. Anyway, um, the, what the servants said was uh, uh, very reasonable based on the real the condition. And uh, his, yeah, his concern it sounds like it makes sense. But the Elisha still said the same thing, the commanding that the bread be the brought to the people. So why? Why he still told the man to put the bread before the pe people? It is because Elisha did not properly uh, perceive re the reality? No. He knew the situation better than anyone else. Nevertheless, it was because of what God said. Elijah said, for this is what the Lord says. For this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some leftover. Even though he knew the situation well, Elisha put the word of the Lord over the visible the situation. To him, what the word of God, what the word God says was more important than how the situation looked like. This shows who those who believe in God are. We believers, we are the people who live by faith in the word of God, not by living according to the visible the situations. We, God's people, live not by sight, but by faith. We see reality, but we believe the word of God more. To us, the word of God is the ultimate reality. So we are not bound by even the visible the reality. Instead, we see the reality that will come true according to the word of God. So we live holding the word of God and his promise instead of being limited by our visible the reality. On the other hand, the people in the world without faith live on what they see. 
because of that because uh, because of that uh, because for them the visible reality is all uh, there is so they think and act according to what they see then they cannot escape the limits of re reality and the visible reality controls their, their life Elisha had only 200 the loaves of bread in front of him but he believed that 100 people would have enough to eat and even have leftover just as God said he was seeing the another reality that would come true according to the word of God and did what God told him to do by faith when the, we are in certain the situation we must hold on to the word of God and live by faith rather than just being caught up in the visible the situation then the we, uh, we can experience God's mighty power and his word the promises uh, come true but if we do not live by faith we are no different from the people in the world and we uh, we will live a life that is no different from uh, from them so we are living in a world that is filled with the troubles and the problems and has a lot of limitations that is the uh, true and reality but god has called us to live by faith so that uh, we may overcome this the visible the reality and condition and experience God's mighty power and blessing and live a life that produce good fruit for God and the source of blessing for others this is the life that God wants us to live in Jesus Christ therefore no matter what our visible situation or reality looks like we must hold on to the word of God and his promise by absolute faith and live in hope and faith in the almighty God our father uh, look at verse uh, 44 okay, let's read uh, this verse all together okay, let's go then he said before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord as Elisha said, the servant put the bread in front of the people. Then, just as God said, everyone who was there ate and had some leftover. Probably, you know, some of them took the leftover home you know, to, their, to their families. By his mighty power, God multiple, multiplied the 200 loaves enough to feed 100 people and uh, let them have some leftover through this the God showed that he is able to feed his children and his people abundantly in any poor or limited, limited situation this miracle also shows us that God would feed all people who come to him through Jesus abundantly in the passage the loaves of the barley bread the baked from the first uh, ripe grain refers to Jesus one of the offerings that God commanded to Israelites was the uh, uh, grain offering uh, Le Leviticus chapter 2 verse 4 says if you bring a grain offering baked in an oven it is to consist of the finest flour either thick loaves made uh, without the yeast and uh, with olive oil mixed in or thin loaves made without yeast and uh, uh, brushed uh, with olive oil this grain offering was the foreshadow of Jesus uh, 
uh, who uh, would uh, sacrifice himself to God as an offering and uh, become the bread of life for all sinners. Just as God fed 100 people with the 200 barley bread with his mighty power, God can feed all people, all people who come to him through Jesus abundantly. Even if tens of thousands of people come to him, millions of people come to him, they can be fed abundantly through Jesus Christ. No matter how hungry we are in any kinds of famines, what kinds of limitations we have, God can feed us enough through Jesus. Jesus is infinity. There are no, no limitations on, on him. The, uh, the severe famine is still going on everywhere, everywhere uh, in this world. The real famine is the spiritual famine. Uh, Amos chapter uh, 8 verse 11 says, The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send the famine through the land, not a famine of food or thirst of water, but the famine of hearing the words of the Lord. We see physical the famine uh, in poor uh, countries here and there, uh, but the spiritual famine is going on everywhere in the whole world, regardless how the countries, the rich or poor, economically, it doesn't matter. Spiritual famine is going on everywhere. People are starving spiritually everywhere. God has uh, pity on those who are starving and wants to feed them with the true, real bread, the Jesus Christ. May God help us to have God's heart, which is to eager to feed the hungry and people. And we may believe what God says and his uh, power. If we bring whatever we have to God with the great faith and thanks, God will feed with the many people abundantly through what we uh, bring to him. May God help us to put Jesus before many people by faith. May God use our LA UBF ministry to feed countless thousands of college students. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for feeding us with the precious uh, the bread, Jesus Christ, and feeding us even the physically, providing everything what we need. Uh, Father, uh, help us to come consume Jesus, take him in us, that uh, he may cleanse us uh, from all uh, harmful things and change us to be your holy people and have having uh, your image and the fruit of Holy Spirit that uh, we may be good food to others. Our fellowship may be enjoyable and beneficial to everybody. Uh, Father, also please help us to hold your word. We may not just live on based on the visible things, but live by faith, holding your word that we may see the, your great word uh, come true and experience your mighty power, Lord. Uh, Father, use, uh, use, us, uh, use us as a five loaves and a fish to many hungry people, starving people uh, in the world. And uh, people may fed uh, through, through us. Uh, thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.